So, okay. Time flies like an arrow, food flies like banana, um, as the Marx Brothers said. So let's hurry on to our next uh, panel, panel number four, as I said, uh, which is entitled The Transcriber's Workflow, Inside, Outside and Beyond the Platform. And the mode that we are see going to see here is uh, so-called lightning talks that are 10 minutes long. So um, yeah, we're a little pressed for time. And let's see, it depends a little bit on how uh, uh, good you can uh, do in terms of keeping time, whether we have questions or not. So I think it's completely fine if we uh, postpone the questions to the coffee break as well. If you see, okay, time uh, is getting scarce, then we can always do that to uh, have a little bit of a buffer. And uh, yeah, the first speakers here uh, will be Milan von Lange and Caroline Kaiser. Uh, who are both with the NIOT Institute for War, Holocaust, and Genocide, uh, Genocide uh, Studies. And the title of their talk is From Variation to Validation, Digitizing NIOT's War Letters from 1935 to 1950 using HTR. So a very serious topic, um, but one that's also very interesting in terms of the technological approach that you're taking. The floor is yours. You can use either this microphone or the one that's on the table. So I use this one? Yeah. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. So um, I'm Milan, this is Carline, and we are uh, together working at the NEOT Institute, uh, like Andy just told you. Um, our colleague Annalise couldn't be here, but she's joining online. So hello, Annalise. Um, we are working on uh, a um, project, an interdisciplinary project um, at the NIOT, in which we're uh, digitizing a collection of historical war letters of personal correspondence from the period before, during, and after the Second World War in the Netherlands and its former colonies. Um, we're going to present the project very briefly. We're going to say something about the collection, and we're going to ask a question from you, our audience. Um, but Carline, can you maybe first say something about the collection itself? Yes, of course. Uh, the collection is 30 meters long and uh, it has many letters, but we also have agendas, uh, medals, uh, LPs, and so on. Um, and newspaper cuttings. Um, it's all created in the period 1935-1950. And uh, the letters are written by uh, different people in various uh, situations. We have letters written by collaborators, um, letters from resistance uh, people. We have letters written by children, by elderly people, by men, women, um, citizens, uh, refugees. Yeah, well, quite some. Yeah, and the, the project that we're currently working, oh, currently working on is not only a digitization project, but yeah, we call it a hybrid project as we're involved in the project with an information analyst, an archivist, and an historian. Um, and so we call it an hybrid project as we're also reflecting on the implications of what we're doing, of the digitization, of uh, making transcriptions, of using HDR, but also on annotating metadata in this, these, these very heterogeneous materials. Um, and we're also investigating the implications for, ex uh, for historical research as we go through the project and reflect on archival practices and choices and decisions as we make it in the project. And we do this together with several partners, uh, among them uh, also the Warlocks project from Luxembourg. I think Nina Jans is also here and presenting tomorrow um, with the students from different universities as well. And we're now also involved in a small network um, that, we, that we started with, with these people um, for yeah, digitizing war letters using transcribus uh, through different workshops and meetings um, already. Um, so yeah, what did we do? Caroline, can you maybe take over the microphone? Yeah, I can. Uh, what we do, we uh, scanned and preserved the collection. Um, we did a bulk upload to the server of Transcribus, uh, which went very smoothly, uh, thanks to Rutger van Koort. I don't know, Rutger, if you're here online, but thank you. Um, we um, created a HDR model, and our current error rate, uh, character error rate right now is 5%, uh, which already sounds pretty good to us. 
Yeah, and, and I have to say on the, the most of the collection, this works indeed relatively well. But from manual evaluation of the results, we also uh, discovered that because of the huge variation within the collection, this character error rate was also quite inconsistent over different parts of the collection. Um, so we have quite mixed results and differences in performance of the HDR due to the extremely heterogeneous nature of this collection. And this is caused by differences in handwriting, as Caroline just, just told. We also have uh, letters written by children from sometimes yeah, very young age. Um, you can imagine that their handwriting is not the best, but we don't have enough material of these person, of these children, for example, to train a model uh, that's also good at recognizing their handwriting. And we also have to deal with uh, uh, letters that are written in the times of paper scarcity, which means that the quality of paper is sometimes really bad. Sometimes letters are written on everything like chocolate wrappers. Toilet paper, um, we also have those in the collection. It's not used, but used to write on. And um, yeah, so basically the question that we uh, want to ask you is, what should we do with this heterogeneous collection? Should we maybe accept a, a more or less inconsistent error rate through the collection? Should we retrain? Should we use volunteers uh, to manually correct transcriptions? So basically that's the question that we want to, to give back to you. Um, and we have also created a QR code on, uh, with which you can find some more on the project. And um, this has no information about vaccination status, but you can find some more. And uh, we hope we have some time for a small discussion. Thank you. Thanks a lot for keeping excellent time. And for that, you're getting mugs. No, not for that.